Her biography must be made into a film. Sabiha Gökçen's life was spectacular and unique, full of drama and conflict, which is why I tagged Christopher Nolan in this video. She stood like no other for the newly born Turkish Republic and the promise of a progressive, secular and modernized order. Her life was marked by her strong will, her courage and unbelievable coincidences. It began tragically. As her father had been exiled to Bursa, she was born here in 1913 in humble circumstances. She lost her parents at an early age and was left an orphan in the care of her brother. Due to the Turkish War of Liberation, which had only just ended in 1923, there were countless orphans and who would have guessed that the fate of this one orphan girl would change in such a way. In 1925, none other than the founding father of the young Turkish Republic and first president Mustafa Kemal Atatürk came to Bursa and resided not far from Sabiha's home. The then 12-year-old girl wanted nothing more than to be able to attend a higher school and asked permission to tell Atatürk about her request when she saw him waiting at the train station. Touched by her tragic fate, but at the same time impressed by her courage and ambition, he asked Sabiha's brother to adopt her and take her under his wing. Atatürk had no biological children, but he adopted eight children who came from precarious backgrounds, like Sabiha for whom a completely new life now opened up. She could now study in Ankara and later in Istanbul. In 1934, Atatürk gave her the surname Gökçen due to the new surname law introduced as part of the reforms. Atatürk did not choose the surname randomly as it translates as belonging to sky. How poetic and foreshadowing. In 1935, she began her pilot training at the Türk Kushu Flight School, newly founded by Atatürk. She graduated with flying colors and one year later, just as her foster father had planned from the beginning, she joined the Turkish Air Force to become the world's first female fighter pilot. As the surname prophecy predicted, Atatürk's regime promoted female role models who were, in his words, the mothers of the nation. This woman of the Republic was cultured, educated and modern. Sabiha was the incarnation of this idea. Atatürk saw the future of Turkey in educated and emancipated women. And while women in countries like France, Belgium or Switzerland had to fight for the right to vote for decades, the self-determined and emancipated woman in Turkey was already part of the modernization reforms in the 1930s. Gökçen flew its first missions in summer 1937 and spring 1938 during the suppression of the Dersim uprising. She supported the advance of Turkish ground forces by bombing Kurdish positions. This was Turkey's last major Kurdish uprising and Sabiha Gökçen is criticized by historians for her active participation in this massacre. In 1938, after the death of her spiritual father Atatürk, a new law came into force that banned women in Turkey from serving in the army. Imagine having one of the best fighter pilots in the world in your army and exclude her overnight because she is a woman. From then on, she took charge of fighter pilot training in the Turkish Air Force. Throughout her career as a pilot, Sabiha Gökçen flew a total of 22 different types of aircraft and logged over 10,000 hours of flight time and was honored as one of the most outstanding pilots of the 20. Flying was her great passion and she flew her last flight in 1996 at the age of 83 and won by that the title of the coolest grandma ever. In honor of this remarkable woman, Istanbul's second airport in Kadiköy was named after Sabiha Gökçen. Until 2019, there was also an airport in Istanbul named after Atatürk. So father and daughter were united as Istanbul's airport. Kinda cute, isn't it? Throughout her life, she remained true to the values of her foster father and spoke out against political Islam. Without Atatürk's reforms and visions, Sabiha might have remained a poor orphan in Bursa, but fate was kind to her. So Nolan, Spielberg, Cameron, your turn.